Hi everyone, I am Kathy Williams and I am a graduate recruitment specialist here at Oklahoma State University right here in Tulsa. And um, today I'm here to introduce our next segment of Grad Chats. Today I have with us a very, a very special guest who is the Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs. And not only is she qualified um, in her position, but she is also a graduate student from OSU and did it all with, while she was raising a kiddo. So she's got a lot of experience and a lot of advice. And at this point, we're gonna talk a little bit about the process of application and selection for grad school. And number one, how to be successful during your graduate college experience. So with that, I'd like to introduce to you, Dr. Susan Johnson. Thanks, Kathy. Um, so for everybody out there in our virtual world, applying to graduate school is overwhelming, especially if you've been out of school for a while. It was 10 years between my undergrad degree and my master's and another five years between my master's and my doctorate. So a lot of different stages. Yes. Um, so when I applied for grad school, you know, you have to do the application, you need the letters of recommendation. At that, at that time, everybody required an entrance exam and all of that, you had to submit your resume. There were just so many things that seemed overwhelming at that point. So the first thing I would say to you is read the grad portion of the graduate catalog. It's online, okay. but it outlines a lot of deadlines um, that are just like generic deadlines. It helps put things in perspective. Yeah, what do you mean yeah. by that? What do you mean by putting, putting things into perspective for them? Well, because we all think everything has to be done at one time, and that's okay. not necessarily true. You can start the application process. You can submit that. Then you start working on your letters of recommendation. You can work on your goal statement. All of those things can be submitted separately. It doesn't have to be all at one time. Okay. You won't be admitted until all of those things are submitted. Very good point. Very but good point. you do have a little bit of time. You don't have to stress yourself out by trying to get everything in. I know that when I talk to prospective graduate um, students, they, they do panic. It's like, well, I've, I've submitted my transcripts, but I don't know what to do next and da 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 so there, what you're saying is that there's no specific order that those have to be submitted. It's just that they all have to be submitted before they are accepted. Right. There really isn't an order. They just have to be done. The other thing, we all, we all, regardless of who you are, get nervous about entrance exams. <laughs> right? It, it, yes. Nobody likes tests. I, I've never liked tests from the time I was a wee youngster till now. But here's the thing. The entrance exams are one piece of the puzzle. Okay. One part of the equation. Okay. So take the exam, get your scores submitted, let the committee who's in charge of the program look at that in the context of everything else that you've submitted. And don't ever assume that you're not good enough because the score was not good enough. Okay. We Perfect. just, we don't know that. I've heard that quite often. It's, 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 it's the big picture. It's not just, like you said, one piece or, you know, the graduate, you know, the GRE or, you know, your resume or whatever, but it's that whole big picture of who you are as a student and what you bring to the college. Right. To me, I focused more heavily on my goal statement than I did, than I worried about the entrance exam, because the goal statement is really about you and what you want to get out of this program. And that's what people on the committee are reading. Okay. And that says a lot about you. It says how you can write, it's, it um, informs them about your thought process, 
how you put sentences and things together. All those things are way more important than just one score. So it's, it's, who, it's a big picture of who you are. If you are going to tell somebody the importance of what to put in those, you know, those grad statements, what would you emphasize? Would you emphasize their um, academic? Would you emphasize their career? Would you emphasize who they are? What, what kind of emphasis would you put on different areas? So there's not a, there's not a good answer to that, in my opinion, because all of those parts play an important role in the selection process. Okay. It's, it's you as, a, as an individual, it's you in terms of your work experience, it's you in terms of your academic experience, and it's really more about where you want to go and what you want to be as a okay. result of this program. Ideally, your, your goal statement. Right. Obviously. Right. Okay. Perfect. Um, if you are going to ask people for specific uh, letters of reference, who would you recommend? Well, I worked in higher ed at the time. So I asked uh, one person that I had been working with for quite some time in the higher ed arena to write a letter of recommendation. And then I had a personal letter of recommendation from a lifelong friend that I asked for. And then I um, had a colleague and a coworker that I asked a recommendation for. Okay. Because I felt like those three individuals could speak to me as a person and not necessarily just one part of my life. Perfect. Perfect. There's, you know, there's just so many layers to it, it seems like, that yes, you're right um, in your statement of it can be completely overwhelming, and it's like, I don't know what's most important, you know, right. I don't know, you know, what, what level and what um, energy emphasis to put into those, yeah. those pieces. Everything's important. Unfortunately, everything's, everything's important. important. It is. What about deadlines? Um, dead, here's the thing about being a grad student. If you can't meet the deadlines in the application process, people are going to wonder if you can meet the deadlines in your coursework. Good point. Okay. So pay attention to the deadlines. They are extremely important. Perfect. That kind of leads me into a, um, a little fun statement that I had given you um, initially. And I know everybody out there that remembers uh, Tom Hanks and uh, Gina, I forgot her, her last name. Um, anyway, the League of Their Own. The, oh, yes. The, the baseball Hunter movie. Davis, I think, yeah. And, and he looks at him as she starts crying and he looks at her and he goes, there's no crying in baseball. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, well, there will be tears shed in grad school. Yes. Definitely yeah. tears shed in grad school. Yes. But what I wanted to point out, and please correct me or um, add to this if you would, um, is the fact that by the time you get to that 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 point of um, your application is done and you, you don't really know what to do next. Yeah, you'll, you'll be assigned, once you're admitted, you'll be assigned to a faculty advisor. Right. And so you can reach out to that advisor as a resource, but you will have your plan of study. And it's pretty well laid out what courses are required, where, what courses you can take as electives. Um, you know, again, going back to the grad college portion of the catalog, there are deadlines, you know, by your 17th hour, you must have a plan of study on file. All those things, you know, your, your faculty advisor might remind you of some of that, but some of them might not. Right. And so it really is up to you to keep a pretty accurate accounting of what all you've submitted and when it's all due. What is the plan of study? A plan of study basically outlines, it tells you what your degree plan is, and it outlines all the courses that you're going to take as well as your electives. It has to be signed off on by your advisor, and the grad, it has to go through the grad college, and that's the, that's the 
the check mark that allows you to further go on further in your studies. Now you mentioned early and I did the same thing. I did my master's degree like 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> dating yeah. myself. Um, and then recently, you know, put myself back into grad school and um, a lot has changed. Um, yeah. A lot hasn't, mm -hmm. but would you recommend someone going straight through or maybe taking some time off in between? Oh boy, that's, that's really a personal preference question because, so you said there's no crying in baseball. Okay. <laughs> so no crying in grad school. All right. uh, when I was in my master's program, my daughter was four and five years old. Wow. And so I promised her that once I completed my master's, I would take a little bit of time off okay. before I went on to my doctoral degree. And I kept that promise um, because it was important to me. So for individuals, I think you have to make, you have to look at your life and see what, what all do you have going on? Because the time commitment for a graduate program is intensive. If you're taking a three credit hour course, you need to realize you're going to spend probably 10 to 12 hours a week studying. So, exactly. and so I would say to people, look at your life, weigh your options, see what makes sense. There's never going to be an ideal time uh -huh. to pursue a, a graduate degree because we, have, we all have lives. You have right. to decide that for yourself. So with that in mind, this is a perfect segue to, you know, trying not to go to the COVID thing, but at the, at the same yeah. time, life is what it is now and it's completely different. Um, so people who are off work, um, working from home, whatever, um, that's a really difficult spot to be in. Yes. Um, any words of advice there? Um, it's a perfect time to go back for a grad degree. If you've got your undergrad degree and you're sitting at home, you've been laid off. Um, there are financial, um, there's some financial aid available depending. Okay. I would always say call the financial aid office and talk to them about the program you're interested in. See what your options are because if you don't have anything else to do, at least consider going back for a grad degree, maybe a certificate, which is, yeah. you know, 12 to 15 hours depending, right? Yeah. yeah. And so that at least gives you one more credential in your arsenal to go out and be employed in the, the workplace. When things get back to normal, if they ever get back to normal. Yeah. It, it exactly. just gives you one more credential. And as you know, for, um, for OSU, we have the MS and interdisciplinary studies program, right. which you can take, you know, three certificates and stack together and come out with a master's degree. I wish we had had that when I was going through my master's Amen. Degree. Amen. Yeah. Yes. And I, I will just jump in here real quickly and just tell everyone who is watching um, that if you have any questions about those particular degrees, whether it's a grad degree or specifically as Dr. Johnson has as uh, talked about um, the graduate certificates, they're amazing opportunities to, again, add to those credentials to be prepared for when things kind of do get back to normal again, yeah. so. And the other thing I would say is if, if, you're, if you think you're not ready for a graduate certificate or a graduate program, look at an undergrad certificate. There, there are yeah. undergrad certificates out there. Yes, just anything so that's going to help way. boost your resume. Right, exactly, exactly. Perfect. Maybe you want to change jobs, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so uh, maybe a certificate would give you a different set of skills that would allow you to do that. Well, I have one final question, and, and it's kind of a loaded question, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what exactly would you say is expected in grad school and how to help someone succeed in that process? First of all, it's not like undergrad. Right. Graduate school is very different. You need to come to class prepared. You need to have already completed your readings. You need to have given them some thought and be, you know, come to class, be prepared to have discussions about it. 
you know, there's a lot of writing. You need to make sure that you um, have the materials available. If you have concerns about your writing, check into a tutoring service, a, a writing tutoring center. Uh, we have one on the Tulsa campus. Um, the other thing is, is back to the homework, knowing how much time commitment that's going to, that will make or break you. It just really will. And, and then figure out where you study best. So oh, for me, um, again, I had a daughter and I was a single parent. And so when she was little and I was going through grad school, I could not study at home. But as she got older and I was going through my doctoral program, I actually moved my computer and workstation into the living room and had a set of headphones. And I would listen to music and work on my documents and, and study and read while she was on the couch watching TV. There because that didn't isolate us. It still made us feel like a, a, a family. A unit, yes. A unit, right. And so everybody, you know, everybody who came into my house during that time knew that I had papers all the way around my desk on the floor. And that was my boundary. You couldn't step over the papers. You know, this is my space. You ought to see my dining room table right now. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> but you but you figure out what works for you. Maybe for right. some people it is isolation more than being in a, a communal area, so to speak. But for us, it was that communal area. And I found that I felt like if I wasn't there, I was missing out on her life. And I didn't want to do that. How do you think she feels about what you went through during that she is proud. She is proud. I bet she is. She knows that she played an important part of that. There's no way I could have done it without her support. I mean, she was a teenager and a child. She, let's face it, she could have made my life miserable. You know, <laughs> I would never. Have Most of us did that to our parents. <laughs> I know, exactly, right? So, <laughs> so. You know, the, the thing that I will leave with is a good friend of mine told me, Graduate school is an exercise in perseverance. Oh, yes. Agreed. So, no crying in baseball. Persevere. Be prepared for your classes. And you'll be fine. Great advice. If ever anybody, uh, honestly, um, I work on campus, on the Tulsa campus. If ever anybody wants to stop into my office and say, Hey, I'm struggling. I don't know how to do this. I'm happy to sit down and talk. And I can vouch for that. I have spent a few, a few moments here and there um, bending your ear yes. and how much it has meant to me and how much I will carry that with me. So I want to thank you so very, very much for being here today and helping to explain the um, the details as well as, you know, the, the finer details of successful, successfully entering grad school as well as being a successful graduate. So, um, again, uh, I'm, I'm going to call you SJ because that's my favorite thing to call you. That's okay. So, and, call me um, SJ. <laughs> okay. Well, we appreciate you very, very much and all the work that you've done for OSU Tulsa. And um, again, thank you for so much for being here and joining us today. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it. Okay. We'll right. talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.